Broccolis with Hats, Part 3. Sex Track Thicking Wasn't Very Plus Ultra of You, by Cheerios, read by My Lost and Found. Summary. You push the resistance leader into a giant fan. Midoriya huffed. He was a villain and a scoundrel. Midoriya, he was trying to stop you from pushing other people into the fan. Well, I'm not sure how. Selkie scratched his head. But the villain Innsmouth ship sank not too long ago. It's hard to say whether there were any survivors, but it doesn't look good. Ida pressed his hands together in a position imitating prayer, though no one could possibly say what exactly he was praying for. Possibly a god. Possibly a minor deity of chaos and destruction. Possibly whatever demon woke up and decided to choose violence for his once kind and simple friend. Again, who could say? Todoroki, somehow still infuriatingly calm about the situation, pulled off a secretive smirk. Midoriya, once again, showed no trace of guilt, though Ida wasn't dumb enough to think that he'd imagine the whole thing. Did that really happen? Did Midoriya really do that? What happened to your arm, Midoriya-chan? Asui asked, inspecting their green-haired classmate's arm. Ida, despite knowing that he wouldn't get into trouble if Midori was caught for murder, after all, he'd just been along for the ride this time, cut in before Midori could attempt to answer. He fell! On what? Aizawa side-eyed them. A harpoon, Todoroki supplied holding up the harpoon from where it was on the boat. That's weird. I could have sworn I left the spares in a shed at the docks. Todoroki's temperature difference on each side suddenly became much more noticeable from where he was positioned between Ida and Midoriya. Which, well, Ida felt somewhat vindicated that there was finally some noticeable discomfort from his apathetic classmate friend? He'd been getting worried that he really was stuck with two sociopaths. As always, glare pierced through the doubt. I told you explicitly that there would be a problem child on board, and yet you set up the perfect situation for him to get hurt. Again? Midoriya blinked. But I just got stabbed. That's not Selkie san's fault. Ida's breath turned shaky, and even Asui and Todoroki were staring openly at their classmate. The words, I just got stabbed, should never be uttered by anyone, ever, even, or perhaps especially, by someone who broke their bones on a regular basis. I'm going to quit, Aizawa muttered faintly. I am seriously quitting my job. Ida could sympathize. There were multiple times in the past few months where Ida had to ask himself, like, really ask, if being a hero was worth it. Unfortunately, the answer every time was a solid yes, but never before had he seriously considered leaving the hero course as much as he is now. Ida knew deep down, that he wouldn't leave. But still. Somehow, against all odds, they'd finish the term with almost no other incidents. He didn't count them all fiasco because Midoriya hadn't actually murdered anyone there. And isn't that a sad thought? Him only counting an incident if his friend is killing someone. In hindsight, he should have expected something would go wrong. But he'd been lulled into a false sense of security. It was all because of his eldritch monstrosity of a friend, Midoriya, that he'd suffered so much, 
Any time he attempted to put the blame on the boy, he found he couldn't quite resist the urge to forgive him immediately. Possibly because of the scathing glares he received from Todoroki any time he tried. Ida had begun to wonder if Midoriya's quirk was really super strength. It had to be some sort of charisma quirk. But Ida had seen the inhuman strength for himself. Perhaps Todoroki's running theory regarding All Might's secret love child actually had some merit to it. After all, he and Midoriya shared much of the same qualities, personality-wise. Todoroki's eyes trained on him immediately, zeroing in on his face with an intense acuteness, as if he somehow knew that Ida was considering his theories. Ida shivered. Anyway... For whatever reason, Ida had agreed to spend the week between the mall fiasco and the training camp with Midoriya and Todoroki. Apparently, hiding a body and drowning a horde of villains together did wonders for friendship. Who knew? Come on, Tenya. Tensei had laughed when Ida expressed his concerns about the trip. These are your friends. You work too hard. Unfortunately, Ida's attempts to plead his cause to his parents had been for naught. They'd agreed with Tensei wholeheartedly, and had practically pushed the money and a suitcase into his arms, while simultaneously pushing him out the door. Tensei, the traitor, just grinned and yelled at him to have fun. Somehow, Todoroki had convinced, or extorted, bribed, who could really say? his father into letting him go, and apparently pay for the trip. Ida, secretly, was certain the only reason Todoroki had gone to such lengths was because Midoriya had suggested it with the smile, TM, on his face. That was, after all, the only reason Ida had brought it up with his brother. The, that smile was terrifying. Midoriya's mother had just been happy that her son had friends. Friends that weren't, Ida and Todoroki deduced, caught on. And wasn't that a sad thought? So, with the blessings of their families and a concerning lack of adult supervision, and a good excuse to practice the conversational English they'd learned with Mike Sensei, the three of them set off on a plane to a four-day trip to a small South American country. A small country Ida hadn't known the name of until they were in line to leave. A small country he promptly looked up. A small country that was apparently overshadowed by a political instability and had a somewhat shady financial and crime-based past. Oh, they serve a dish based on soba around here. Todoroki nodded while looking at a map, sounding monotone as per usual, but with a sparkle of interest in his eyes that was impossible to miss. Midoriya hummed his surprise, leaning into Todoroki's side, putting enough pressure to push him into Ida's side. Neither of them seemed particularly worried about the frankly concerning information Ida had just discovered. Well, that was all in the country's past. Maybe it had cleared up since then. After all, it was a beautiful place. He paused, reading of the article. Then, Carefully readjusted his glasses and reread the passage. Petty crime can sometimes turn violent in this country, so your best bet is just to hand over everything you own immediately. The problem is that violent crime in general in the country is a serious issue, with the murder rate that's still three times higher than that of. Ida wanted to cry. They jinxed it! That was the only explanation. Midoriya. We're supposed to be on vacation. Ida whispered faintly. Todoroki, who'd thus far seemed unfazed by their friend's antics, appeared somewhat shaken as well. Midoriya, whose face was somewhat splattered with blood, admit a confused smile their way. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a wonderful time. You toppled a South American government, Midoriya? Todoroki refuted, face slightly pale from the sight of gore. Their friend shrugged, way too calm for someone who had just committed one of the most 
terrifying acts Ida had ever seen. The people have spoken! He gestured to the horde of people still working their way through the military officials who hadn't been taken down by a weak stomach or villains? Diva la resistance! You push the resistance leader into a giant fan! Ida shouted, rightly hysterical. One nice vacation was all he asked for. It was early in the morning on the third day there, and Midoriya had already managed to kill people. Midoriya huffed. He was a villain and a scoundrel. Midoriya. Todoroki calmly placed a hand on the boy's shoulder, looking to be the image of an unbothered teen, if not for the pale sheen of his brow. He was trying to stop you from pushing other people into the fan. Oh, those? Midoriya gestured to the pile of body chunks off to the side. Ida gripped his hair. Yes! Yes, those! Midoriya frowned at the chunks. They were part of a local gang that worked in sex trafficking. They murdered like a couple hundred women. Todoroki's bestotted expression returned to his face once more, and yet again, Ida was left as the only sane one in their small group. Oh, well, carry on, Midoriya. Todoroki! Ita shouted. That's literally murder! We are hero students. You're condoning murder. I'm condoning Midoriya. Todoroki sharply responded back to being blank once more. Though, Ida supposed, he couldn't really talk. He did feel relieved after finding out that there was, like usual, a method to Midoriya's madness. Still, he had to try. Ida pressed a hand to his head. I can't go anywhere with either of you. Todoroki frowned slightly. That hurt my feelings. Midoriya gasped, dramatically rubbing a blushing Todoroki's arm. Well, now you're both in the wrong, he said. I... Ida paused. You just killed 37 people! We, he gestured mostly to himself, are not in the wrong here. Todoroki glared at him. Ida sighed. I want to go home. We're leaving. Midoriya pouted but nodded. He perked up not even a second later, however, and Ida was on edge the moment he saw it. In that case, I should mention that our luggage is filled with ingredients. Ida and Todoroki both had to do a double take at that. What? What kind of ingredients? He either meant food or people. Ida wasn't sure which one he preferred. Both were undesirable, but one was clearly preferable. Midoriya happily nodded. Katsudon ingredients. Well, that was certainly better. Todoroki touched his hand to his chin. Why do you need so many ingredients for katsudon? Hmm. Yeah, actually, now that Ida considered it, it was rather odd that it would take three suitcases to carry ingredients for a rather simple dish. I'm building a katsudon dragon, and not just any ingredients will do. Ida, he, he tried, he really did, but forget it. I'm not even shocked anymore. Todoroki nodded in agreement, focused on making sure they took the right path to the hotel. Oh, that's no fun. Midoriya frowned pensively. This is the norm for you now, Midoriya. Todoroki piped up as soon as the hotel came into view. Huh? He blinked. I'll have to try harder next time. Please don't. Ida's heart couldn't take it. I feel like I've invited a challenge. Midoriya, it's too late! A moment of silence permeated the group, until Todoroki's quiet snorts filled the air. It didn't take long until the three friends were laughing together, one blood-splattered and the other two possibly traumatized. So, 
<laughs> we should probably hurry up and leave before the South American government dispatches troops. Midoriya giggled. Holy shit. 